Semen retention gives men superpowers. So today we got a question from a 30 year old man who lives with his parents because his parents are sick. So he's a caretaker. And he asked me, Elliot, in this unfortunate situation where I find myself at home as a 30 year old man and my parents are sick, how do I dig myself out of this looming depression? And so as I began to ponder your question, I hit the reply button and saw that somebody in our community already decided to answer you. And it said semen retention. And at first I thought it was flippant. I was like, this guy is just being a no fat evangelist. But I then began considering how what I wanted to say to you in terms of how you can form your mind in a way to make the most out of your situation and actually allow it to benefit your life would absolutely 100% be impotentized. Is that a right word? More potent, right? Potentialized, potentialized, right? Um, by maintaining your sexual potency, right? Just think about that. You know, a lot of play on words here, like, right? Like your semen retention, semen helps you see man. But I don't want to get too crazy. I'm pretty excited about this topic because I have a personal experience about how I'm able to see better man because of my sea man not floating away all the time. So I learned about semen retention maybe about two, three years ago because you guys told me about it and I decided, yo, I'll give it a shot. And I had some pleasant experiences with not blowing my load. Interestingly enough, it increased some of my superpowers. So let me go back to your my suggestion for you and your situation. And then we're gonna talk about how adding uh, semen retention is like putting fuel on the fire of getting the most out of your life, given your situation. So my natural rational instinct was first to say, every situation we find ourselves in life is there in order to shape us. In other words, when I take on a client and I bring him to the gym and I give him a difficult exercise is because I understand that you are weak in this particular area or based on your sport and the type of performance you're going to have out in the world, you better be strong here. I think God looks at us the same way and allows our life circumstances to be like exercises in the gym. So God knows your potential. He also knows your weaknesses and he'll put you in a situation to allow you to build the virtue and squash the vices that are most exposed in that circumstance. So every circumstance we find ourselves in, and you guys might not know, but I find myself in some tough circumstances as well, right? Um, so <laughs> reflecting on my tough circumstances, but how my tough circumstances turn to great things because of what I'm about to share with you. So first is acceptance. First is non-resistance because when you're in resistance, what you resist persists, right? That very thing you fight in order for you to keep fighting has to be present in your life. So the very first thing is stop fighting, stop resisting, allow it, but not only allow it, but be grateful for it as you would the personal trainer that you pay $100 an hour to kick your ass. God is kicking your ass. And just like that workout will only last a particular time until you overcome that resistance, the same thing with our circumstances in life. I found myself in a tough situation over the past year, and I know why I'm in that situation because I was failing in certain areas where God is asking me to step up, and I get an opportunity to exercise the virtues that he wants to express most potently through me. For you, it is in the area of, well, I'd imagine, because for all of us, it's humility. But specifically for you, caretaking. How do I bring, you know, the word humility is interesting because it's like a lowering down of oneself. How do I, how do I allow myself to be lowered down without being depressed so that I could fulfill on the obligations that God has handed me? That's your situation. And that's all of our situation. If we look at it in the most resourceful way possible, cool, what am I being asked to develop and what am I being asked to let go of in this circumstance? And be grateful for it, right? So that whole sense of being grateful for what you have and also allowing your mind to be open and your eyes to be open to the potential of what could be unfolding uh, is very much mental work. It's very much spiritual work. It's very much a byproduct of a sound and powerful imagination. And this is, 
This is where maybe I'm going to start sounding a little crazy, but you got to understand that um, every spiritual approach that we make or mental image or ideal that we create comes from the palette of our imagination. And we live in a world that does everything that it can in order to denigrate imagination, meaning that like, oh, let's just say it's all in your imagination, right? Like, so for example, God, part of the way that I get into a spiritual state in order to find um, support and vigilance and a way out, conversations with God, mental prayer, right? Which is something I'd encourage you to do. I make a total different video about it if I wanted to. The way mental prayer is most potentized is through imagination, really uh, like multifaceted imagination. See yourself in the presence of the Lord. Feel the ground under my knees. Feel the breeze on my face. Um, what does it smell like in the presence of the Lord? Bring back memories of the scents of incense from the church. Um, what is my physical experience of what's unfolding in my mind? How do I let my imagination be impotentized? I know I'm making that word up, but it potentialized. How do I let my imagination, my gratitude, my conversation with God, my meditating, my pondering, my contemplation, how do I let all these things that are way up here be potentialized, potentialized, potentized? It only happens through feeling, through sensation. That's why when you're in the imagination of, uh, you know, having the gratitude for your situation and being present for perfect unfolding, it requires for that to be most powerful requires that you can, you sense it, you feel it, you got to feel it. And this feeling thing is kind of weird too, because it's like, well, Okay, so first of all, we live in a world that denigrates imagination, but also we live in a world that suppresses feeling. What do I mean by that? Meaning we will stare at a screen all day long or watch a four hour movie and allow it to take us on a roller coaster of emotions, right? Dopamine hits while we're scrolling Instagram or like, you know, the long emotional cascade of watching a, you know, an adventure movie or something like that. And it seems like we can do this in a passive way. We can allow the movie or the, the technology to carry us along this journey. But even more powerful than that is allowing your imagination to carry you on that type of a journey. But that requires, in my experience, a much more filled up feeling space. And the Feeling space is most filled up when you're on semen retention. Every mental image and emotion associated with it while I'm retaining semen is that much more powerful. Now, I don't know the mechanics of why this happens. I don't know why this happens. I don't know the spiritual, physiological reasons why this happens, nor do I care why it happens. This is totally anecdotal. I go into my mental prayer. I go into imagination. I go into my moments of gratitude. And if I have a limp, flaccid, soft dick, I have no essence. I have very little potency. I have very little power. The vigor just isn't there. And thus I don't feel into the imagination. I don't feel into the visualization. It's harder to feel. But not only that, you know, contrast it to having a fully potentialized penis full of vigor and vitality and ready to blow a load, but you breathe it back down and hold it in. You then approach your imagination from that space and it's like magic. I'm having all kinds of powerful visualizations and senses of gratitude, but not just in my mind, like I can feel more, I can feel more intensely. When you don't blow your load, you feel more intense. And that's why a lot of times, you guys get addicted to blowing your loads because you don't know how to handle the intense feelings. You don't know how to flow with the intense feelings. You don't know how to breathe through the intense feelings, be it anger, right? It's going to be more intense or joy and gratitude is going to be more intense, but it's going to be intense either way. What you have the capacity to do as a maturing man, 
full of cum, full of potential, full of essence and vigor and vitality is to take that and be conscious about how you direct it. You don't need to spill it, right? As we tend to think that we always need to do, I need to get this out. But you get to sit with the discomfort and notice where it goes. Is it going to make me frustrated and angry and pissed off? Or will I breathe through those non-emotional or, or breathe through those non-resourceful emotions and direct it towards allowing it me, allowing it to give me a sense of joy and power and love and excitement about the things that I can do and the things that I do have and the direction that God is ultimately taking me. Dude, I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps. Done.